we are like, it's getting a bit warm in here. Um, some of the planning conventions with the helpless building um, will keep the roof at a certain size because the helicopter is on time. So it's, you get really warm. Um, I think the briefing has given me is not to, to I think it's the challenge is to argue why um, the case for um, of, of geography, although I didn't have the language for it, um, when I was a teenage student nurse in a large Victorian psychiatric hospital, one day I decided not to look the staff canteen or look the patient's canteen. And I just couldn't believe what was unfolding in front of my eyes. Here was a group of men and women in conversation with one another, seeing some banter, some laughs, and some real positive interaction. I see these people half an hour later in a big ward, sitting silent, not communicating with one another, absolutely managed in warehouse. So even within that hundred meters, the behaviours and experience of patients absolutely are so so diverse. It's not the biggest thing to take from me from my uh, three years apprenticeship. Um, so my basic position is one that's different from Richard and Ian. I don't think that nursing is a discipline. I think it's a practice. It's a practice that, that is a cauldron for huge numbers of other disciplines, whether it be pharmacology, anatomy and physiology, health policy. Um, so I think that we draw in a huge range and there's competing, competing demands um, for space in what is already an overloaded curriculum. Um, the, the, the problems in additive curriculums are absolutely huge in nursing, um, and I just that email today that the government want, want more um, um, knowledge and learning disability in undergraduate education. And whenever there's a problem um, with the minister, the minister's going to face problems about healthcare associated infection, then this get, we get mandated to include this. And if you look at our curricula, as I do regular, they're mm -hmm. absolutely incoherent. It's just from one minute you've got health policy, next minute you've got ethics, next minute you've got law, next minute you've got pharmacy. It's just a melange. Um, so the question is, um, sure, health geography is a place, and geography is a place, but how does it compete with um, those other sciences, biomedical sciences? Um, I think the argument we put forward is that I want a nurse who's given me oxygen to know the physiology of respiration and to know why if she gives me too much, too strong a concentration, I'm going to die. I want the nurse who's given me an injection to know where the sciatic nerve is. I don't want that injection in my backside into that sciatic nerve. So there's the, a strong argument that, that in competition for space in an already overloaded curriculum, perhaps health geography or geography falls down, down the list. And, contrast to those other. So that's the first challenge is in an overloaded curriculum. Making the case for health geography is one that needs to be made consistently and it needs to be made relative to other. And my personal view is that you could shed 50 to 60 percent of what is already in nursing curriculum and students would be none the worse off. It's just as business with nurses need to fill from nine o'clock in the morning on a Monday to five o'clock on, on a Friday and still give the students tons of homework and podcasts and that on. So I think there is a, a case to be made that I'm not sure it's been made uh, yet. Um, is this been a neutral, I'm not, I'm drawing the debate, the social sciences, educational sciences, has the relationship been often a, a broadly neutral one with nursing? Well, there's an argument that that's not the case, and that the first generation of PhD prepared um, academics in nursing tended to have their, do their PhD in education and social sciences departments. Uh, never really developed the profession, the knowledge of the profession, until evidence-based medicine come along. And there's also, a, and this is a weaker argument, I'll, I'll deploy it in any sense, is those people tended to be at the margins of the discipline, never really drove it forward. That left a gap, and it left a gap filled by nurse theorists from America proposing nurse theories. And some of these nurse theories are absolutely daft. You want to read some of them, they're absolutely bonkers. Um, 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 I'll not refer to any in particular, but we drove many parts. Book. Um, so I think that, and that set us back in about 15 years in our development as a profession. So the, we need a hardcore of PhDs uh, in nursing. Um, in saying that, I should add that we are very different. This 
Stirling and many other nursing departments. We have eight professors, only two are nurses. Um, here at alone, we have two health geographers amongst the staff of 20. It's a, when you speak at nursing, nursing departments, you're not speaking at nurses. Probably 50, 60% of our research active staff are not nurses. So I think it's a very interdisciplinary mix, I think that's great. Born in mind. Um, so the relationship in social sciences and nursing is <coughs> developing the profession is one that's not been, it could be argued, is not one that's always been sympathetic. Um, the next line of argument could be, um, what's the pedagogical basis for social sciences and nursing? Um, and I think if you look at some of Knowles' work, who's, who's who developed the notion of andragogy, adult learning theory, He's very, very clear. He's clear in the sense that adult learners have a number of particular features, and two of those features is they've got knowledge that is relevancy, and they can see the relevancy, and they want knowledge that is practical. Um, that's why nurses, undergraduate students, if you ask them, they get a list, I'm absolutely that, a list of things that they want, and the clinical skills, um, and that means physiology and health, social sciences would wipe down the list. So I think that there needs to be some, there would need to be some convincing of these adult learners, there needs to be some pedagogical um, um, approach, um, and there needs to be some convincing of some of our, our, our learners that um, health job in social sciences is useful. Um, I think another thing, I think Gavin and Ian Richard both touched on it, and is that the language that's used, um, by and large, I'm pretty familiar with the fact that disciplines or professions speak to themselves and not to, to others. Um, and I've, I just looked through that health geography journal today, um, and some of the papers had a clue. And it just reminded me about um, uh, a couple of weeks ago, my partner has been struggling just to complete a PhD, and she's been struggling with care theory. And she, I said, well, give me the main paper and the field of shooting this paper. And I burst out laughing halfway through the first page. <laughs> it was like some of that stuff that nurses were reading and producing in the, I'm uh, uh, an example here, that were producing in the, the 1980s. And I'll, I don't want to, I'll take a long time to Rosemary Class, but she's the best example <laughs> of, <laughs> of nonsense. And she writes, assumptions and her theory about man. The human is coexisting while co-constituting the vertical patterns of the universe. Can you tell me what that means? Um, the human is transcending multidimensionally with the possibles. So, and there's a challenge for, for the social scientists in nursing is to make that those insights, those theories available in a way that students would easily recognise and and. Uh, and see as relevant and see as relevant to the practical world that they see themselves as, as joining. Um, so the language is a, another problem. Um, the issue I'll just touch on, I'm not really sure it's particularly important, um, is who teaches this. We want the human geographer, the health geographer, who knows their field very well, but perhaps can put in examples that make it relevant to when I walk onto Ward 7, um, the technology and, and such like, or do we give it to nurses who probably have done an OU module on a particular subject and really don't understand that discipline very well and give a, an ersatz um, um, experience of social sciences to students. So I think there's a, an issue about who teach. I don't have a particular view anyway. And I think my last point I will make is is it undergraduate or postgraduate? Um, and I think that Ian and Richard are very clear it's undergraduate. Um, my experience in the social sciences was absolutely profound. And it provided insights that otherwise were never known to me, but that came in postgraduate. Or when, I, when I was an experienced charge nurse, clinical teacher, at that point I was a master in my craft. I knew nothing, not worried about it. I could do it with my eyes shut often. But here was Goffman, sick role, giving new insights, good patient, bad patient, and so on. So it was at that stage that um, social sciences were most interest to me, because I could apply them to a open up a different world um, that had otherwise been um, available to me. So I think the argument I'm making is that 
nursing's a profession, not a discipline. It's at the interface of lots of different disciplines, each competing for a place. Um, um, perhaps that place could be made available if we were not the most highly regulated um, 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 country in terms of nursing, probably in the world, where we're mandated to put a whole list of content and curriculum that I think is absolutely not, not needed. So there could be a debate with the NMC about letting go of the reins, to so let us do just give us competencies. And what we'll do is we'll provide the experience, educational experience that allows students to get there and leave us, leave us alone, please. Um, I think the, the relationship between nursing and social science in terms of the development of profession has sometimes been a bit patchy. I think we're in a better place than we were. Now that we've got, um, um, there needs to be an ex exploration of the relationship between the social sciences and terms of andragogy, adult learning. Is it really the case that nurses will only look at knowledge that's practical and relevant? I think there needs to be a challenge there. Um, the language, and that's the challenge, the language is to bring students in, make it accessible. Um, who teaches? And lastly, undergraduate and postgraduate, and I think I'm pretty clear there. It needs to be gradiated, but I would put a lot of social science at postgraduate, post-qualifying end where students can see the relevance and they're less worried about kind of packs and us buttons and they go to the ward in day one to qualify and am I going to kill patients and this worry that I'm only going to overcome that with lots of clinical skills. Um, the final uh, final point I would make is I'm editor and chief of nursery education today. I think what I'd welcome under the big ideas section at Gary Rolf. Gary Rolf contributes is something from the seminar arguing the case for for social science and a, a hell geography and the I think the are already published in nursery education today, is it? Yeah. So that's my final my final remark and comment. I think what we're going to do is probably about five minutes, because as I say, just to get some air in here, then what Ian's asked me to do is in our groups and our tables that we've sort of naturally congregated in, and I probably won't want Ian and Richard to, to move, to move, um, to discuss what are the issues, what are the comments, what are, what are your thoughts, what ideas have been generated, um, what are the, what are the, the ways spoke forward collectively for health geography or geography and undergraduate and postgraduate, but you're free for postgraduate and curriculum. Um,